A Bible camp in Canada being investigated after an exorcism was performed on a teen, a preteen boy. How did this happen? Who is this individual that performed the exorcism? We'll answer all those questions and more in less than 10 seconds. First, guys, if you could, if YT lets you, try and hit that like button for me. Also, very important, you please share the video, hit the bell, subscribe. I wear the glasses because I'm blind. And as always, guys, if you could help donate here to the ministry, help support what I do, please see more information in the description. So what is going on here? Well, we have the Redberry Bible Camp in Canada. They are currently being investigated by the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mount Police, for what was reportedly an exorcism done on a preteen boy that happened around back on July 13th. Now, according to reports, there was a child that had reportedly been on the ground, was making strange noises, was you know, drooling from the mouth, was bleeding from the nose, was shaking, body was trembling. So kids started panicking and they immediately called for help. Now, a camp counselor arrived there on the scene and this is where the exorcism reportedly took place. Now, what is being investigated right now is the fact that they said that instead of giving this child, you know, proper medical treatment, they jumped right into this exorcism. Now, kids, you know, were gathered all around. They apparently watched this counselor go ahead and perform the exorcism. And I guess this freaked them out so bad to the point that many of them called their parents and wanted to be picked up immediately after witnessing this. Now, not only that, but also after this took place, the counselor said that he had gotten rid of the demon that had been, you know, you know, it, possessing this child and then passed his business card around to the rest of the kids there at the camp and said, look, I'm the only one who can get rid of the demon that was in this child. And so here's my business card. Call me if you ever get demon possessed. I mean, that's what went on here. Now, the board chair for the Redberry Bible Camp has responded to this. And I'm going to get to that statement in a second. This is very interesting. First, guys, let me put a quick plug in for my Patreon. I got no monetization here on this channel. It's my only way of letting you guys know how you can support me. Look, if you guys only watch these videos through YT Alerts, you miss a ton of content. They barely send anything out anymore. So sign up on my Patreon for five bucks a month. When you do, you'll never miss an alert for any of the content I put out. You can comment, censorship free, send direct messages. You can even help contribute on PayPal if you would prefer to go that route. All the links are in the description. A big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So the board chair had responded to this and said that immediately upon learning about the exorcism, this employee was in fact fired. They are looking into this. They say that they did not approve of this in any way whatsoever. We don't know the exact condition of this boy or what this exorcism actually entailed. You know, what did this counselor really do here? And I'll say this, like I'm not against exorcisms. Uh, like I think that there's, I mean, demon possession, ladies and gentlemen, this is a real thing. I'm not saying this isn't some joke here. Uh, the occult is very real. We know that Jesus and you know his disciples cast out demons. But if you don't know what you're doing, that's a whole nother story right there. So you know, this guy apparently says that he casted out demons. I don't even 100% know if that's really what was going on here with this kid. This is just one, you know, this is just the counselor saying this. Regardless, uh, it has brought a lot of negative attention, but not only because of what he did and, you know, you know the whole question of whether or not he's even, you know, qualified to do something like that, but it was also made public as I get hit in the ear with something flying around me get that out of the way <laughs> you see they're trying to stop me you see Satan is a little minion little uh, little buzzards coming around me anyway back to this so it was made public that this counselor was uh, at one point addicted to drugs and also pornography it was very public and yet, 
somehow Redberry Bible Camp hired him anyway. He's also worked for multiple different summer camps. Seems like he's made a home amongst kids. So quite interesting. And the question was asked to Redberry Bible Camp about that, and they haven't responded yet. So I'll be very curious as this investigation continues to play itself out uh, exactly how he was hired. Did they know about it? Did they not care? What was the actual story behind this? Now, also, Redberry Bible Camp has been around a long time, since 1943. In fact, they're uh, owned by a group that calls themselves the, uh, the Saskatchewan uh, Mennonite Brethren. Uh, this is uh, who is affiliated here with the camp. So, you know, we're going to see these things happening here in the last days. And again, I, I want to point this out. Demon possession, very real. However, not everybody that, you know, claims they can be the one that could, you know, perform this sort of thing uh, can really do it. Uh, we just don't know. And, and look, uh, you know, we pray for this young child uh, that he is okay and uh, that uh, he can truly be set free from whatever it is that he's experiencing. And again, we don't even know what his medical condition or, or what condition it is that he even uh, truly has. So I'll leave it there. Uh, I'll put more information here in the description. I open it up to any thoughts anybody watching might now uh, could have. Uh, but I'm not done just yet. I don't leave any video here without giving people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior because this is crucial in this hour. Uh, you want to come to Christ today. And so I'll lead you in this prayer right now, a prayer you can do in your own words. I'll give you the steps, however, in order uh, to bring that prayer before the Lord today. The first thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something we all are. Okay, but the good news is this. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ. He died on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid that cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from sin. Not just to say you're sorry and jump right back in your old ways. It means to turn from lifestyles, habits, those things which are not of the word of God. However, if you humbly go before the Lord and you ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, guys, I'll have more on this for you down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget, links to donate to the ministry down below as well. Uh, I'll be back with more. You guys, take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. I'll talk. We'll see you soon.